This morning I made a post on social media saying that I was gonna be going through my trail tools and all of my recovery gear before I go on this big trip. Well, I've got a couple really big trips lined up and I think that it's time that I go through and organize some of this gear because it's basically just thrown into the back of my Jeep. Uh, I asked if you guys would be interested in a video. Overwhelmingly, you guys said yes. So today we're gonna go through um, my storage solutions that I've come up with that are really easy and really inexpensive, and we're gonna mount this storage solution in the back of my Jeep and hopefully organize this mess that I call my trail tools. A few times a year, I like to step outside of the content that I normally do and make something that's a little bit self-indulgent. Today's video is absolutely a self-indulgent video. Secretly, I'm a gear nerd. I like to collect the right tool for the job or collect the right strap for the off-road situation or whatever it may be. So today's video is all about gear. This isn't normally a gear review channel or anything like that, but this video is absolutely a gear review video. So for those of you that come here to watch me drive over big rocks or to watch me stick stuff together with my welder, this one might not be for you. But for those of you that are like me, and you like to nerd out a little bit over some you know, different cool tools or whatnot, this video is absolutely for us. Today you're gonna to see a hodgepodge of tools that I've collected over the years and some stuff that was recently sent to me. I get sent free gear all the time and the stuff that I like you'll hear about, the stuff that I don't, you won't. We're gonna start with the recovery gear, then we're gonna go through my tools, and then we're gonna try an easy way to store this stuff. Please, stop going off road without basic recovery gear. There's no reason not to throw a, uh, a, a recovery strap in the back of whatever vehicle it is that you're gonna go off road in. And this is even just if you're going hunting or hiking or something in a stock four x four truck, have some means to recover yourself. I run across strangers all the time that I recover with my gear because they're stuck on a dirt road sometimes or they're stuck on a trail and they didn't even bring their own strap. So I think that this, this is one of my, this is my cheapest strap that I own, I believe. It's either this one or that one. They're both from the same company. They're both high lift straps, and these are really inexpensive. You get them at four wheel parts. There's no reason not to spend the, I, I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks for this. I can't really remember now. I've had this one for years. But anyway, this is the entry level recovery gear that you need. Recovery strap and a shackle. So you can either do a metal shackle. These are inexpensive. You can buy them anywhere, even Home Depot, or you can step up to a soft shackle. This is, a soft, this is the newest so, uh, soft shackle from Yankum Ropes. I'm slowly going everything fabric. I'm trying to get rid of as many metal parts as I, as I can. So I'm starting to phase out of all my metal shackles and pretty much everything you see me use in my videos now is soft shackles, because these are, these are great. Anyway, I've got these little keeper things that I got at a local hardware store. I will throw these on an Amazon uh, list in the description of this video, because I think these are super handy to be able to keep your gear organized. You just throw it onto one side and it helps keep it from unraveling as you're bouncing around on trails. A step up from this recovery strap is this one from Yankum Ropes. If you guys have seen my channel before, you know that I highly recommend Yankum Rope products. And it's not because I'm a part of their affiliate program, it's because this stuff is extremely high quality. If you could be here to feel this, when you feel the difference in quality between this strap and this strap from High Lift, it's like going from Carhartt denim to yoga pants. It really is. This stuff is extremely durable. You can tell it's gonna last a long time. And this is my favorite strap that I have here so far. Plus, I like that they use this like rubber um, insulative stuff around the ends to help keep it from fraying and give you a little bit longer life. I like to store these with these little keeper jammies right here and with a soft shackle. I just wrap the soft shackle around the outside. This is the older style soft shackle from Yankum Ropes and it just helps keep, thing, keep things bundled up so once again, it doesn't come apart as you're driving down the trail. This is a kinetic energy rope. This is probably my favorite piece of recovery gear besides a winch. I use this in snow, there is nothing better than this. And I think the same with sand because you're not just using your engine to pull someone out, you're using your momentum to pull them out. So as this stretches, it gains energy. And then by the time it reaches that point where it can start to yank them out, it just very softly whoop, just zips them right out of the hole. It's, it's insane that it took so long for these to be invented. Uh, when I first started wheeling 16, 17 years ago, there was nothing like this on the market. And now you're starting to see these come out of the woodwork. This is the very first Yankum rope that I bought, like, I don't know, almost two years or a year and a half ago, something like that. And I've got 60 to 80 poles on it and the thing still looks and functions outstanding. So 
I highly recommend one of these. Uh, again, I'm using the keeper things to try to keep it straight. And it's, it's, just one of those, it's just one of those tools that is nice to have. Save up the money, get a good one. I highly recommend Yankum Ropes. There's other high quality ropes out there, but definitely check out this company whenever you're shopping around. So don't forget your winch controller. This is another one that uh, I'm constantly finding myself pulling other people out that forgot their winch controller. So before you leave the house and you're packing all your stuff up, don't just make sure you got your extra drive shaft and some water and whatnot. Make sure you got the controller for your winch too. Um, I, I run Warren on most of my vehicles. I also have run Super Winch and Smitty Built, a bunch of other ones. Warren is the one that I like the most these days. Plus, uh, both of my Warrens that I'm running use the same controller, which I really like. A tree saver is great to have. This one is, uh, it's an inexpensive tree saver. It's, it's just a short strap, basically. I think this one's like 10 feet or eight feet, something like that. I believe this one is 15 or 20. And I think the Yankum might be 30. I can't remember, uh, but either way, this is a tree saver. Don't wrap your winch line around a tree. It's bad for the trees. In many states like mine, it's illegal to do. And it's actually one of the reasons they close down public land is because a lot of people will go through and just destroy it. And I know it's just a tree, but the reality is there's a lot of people who also own that land besides us, besides, be yeah. <laughs> that own that land besides us who are using it for off-road and they're their trees too. So let's just throw a little tree saver around it. There's no reason in uh, fraying up your winch line or destroying that tree when you could just throw a strap around it. Super easy. This is a new product from a company called Factor 55. Um, I'm not affiliated with them. They've sent me some free stuff and I do like their products. This is something that I'm very fascinated by. This is called the load distribution plate. I'm starting to carry it with me. I, I need to sit down and come up with some scenarios where uh, I wanna start using this because I think that there is a lot of opportunity here to do some cool stuff, but I haven't spent enough time uh, sitting down and thinking of ways that I could use this. Either way, it stays in the recovery bag. It's lightweight, it's aluminum, and it's something that's gonna be in there. And maybe, who knows, when I'm in Moab uh, next week, maybe I'll figure out a way to use it. Snatch blocks are a must. This is a, you're starting to see a lot more of these snatch blocks come up now. This one's from Factor 55, and this is basically works best with synthetic rope. I don't think that they made this one for, for regular stainless steel rope, but these are pretty cool. It's a lot lighter than the older style. I have a few, um, a few older style snatch blocks that I just phased out of my kit because I have this. And so you're gonna see me use this and test this out in the channel a lot more in the near future. Two basic shackles. I'm actually gonna ditch one of these because there's no reason to carry two. I have four soft shackles. This is basically only gonna be for the situations where someone doesn't have a big enough spot uh, for me to recover from on their vehicle, including me. On my rear bumper, I, ha it, I only have it set up to be able to use one of these, not a soft shackle. So I'm gonna keep one of these on board. This one I'm actually gonna go put in the back of the shop. And that is everything that I carry for basic recovery equipment. Of course, there's other stuff you could use. You could use a shovel, you could use a high lift. Um, there's some other basics like that. I mean, just a regular jack, which I do carry, just a regular bottle nose jack. But for me, I am trying to whittle down this kit as much as possible. I only use a shovel when I go in an extremely deep snow and I haven't been in extremely deep snow in this TJ this year, so there's no shovel in there right now. But you'll see next year, whenever the snow comes back to Washington, I will definitely be using a shovel as well. Trail tools is the area that I'm really trying to clean up. So all of this has basically just been tossed in the back of my Jeep, just kind of moving around loose. And we're gonna actually, we're gonna put together like a storage system here in a little bit. But first I wanna talk about tools and how I've been doing it. So I basically like to keep everything in bags because I think that it's a lot quieter, even though this is clearly not super quiet, but uh, whenever it's all zipped away in bags, I find it to be a lot quieter whenever you're moving around and things aren't just like, they don't sound like they're bouncing and shifting. That kind of sound drives me nuts, especially that thing's a diesel, it vibrates a little bit. So right now I have just tons of these bags that are full of various tools and I just have it marked on there what tools are inside. And this isn't all that bad, but I'm trying to make it to where it's a little bit faster for me to get to these tools whenever I need them. And it's a little bit easier for me to, I don't know, just consolidate this in some way. The way it's set up right now drives me nuts a little bit. So I'm gonna abandon some of this stuff. Some of the stuff I'm gonna keep. This is shop towels and gloves. I'm gonna keep this with the new kit, but this bag of wrenches is no longer gonna be in the Jeep. I'm trying to, uh, upgrade all this stuff. So I've got this little tool kit right here from a company called 
Tecton, I believe. It's either Tecton or Tecton. I don't know. I haven't heard it said. I've only seen it uh, written. And I have had a lot of tool companies contact me and offer to give me free tools. I say no to most of them because I don't really, I don't need a bunch of cheap tools. There's a lot of inexpensive tool companies that are constantly emailing brands like me, or uh, sorry, YouTube channels like me, to give us free stuff. But this company I, I know makes quality products. And whenever I got it, I could tell that this is all made very well. And this kit in particular is a nice kit because this is all the sockets and ratchets and everything that I would wanna bring with me on the trail all in one shop. Super simple and the way things are stored in here is very nice and tight. So the only thing that I'm gonna to do to upgrade this is I'm gonna fold some shop towels across this here to make it to where whenever I shut this, it will put tension on these sockets and it'll make it to where it's less likely that these are gonna shake and rattle and vibrate as I'm going down the trail. This technically takes up more space than some of these bags of stuff do, only because it's got this big case, but the case keeps things so much more organized that I'm willing to sacrifice the space in order to make it to when I open this up, I can clearly find the 19. <laughs> so this is gonna be a big upgrade for me moving forward. And they sent me this for free. I'm not, I don't have any affiliation with this company in any way. I'm telling you that it's good only because I've been using the stuff in the shop and I really like it. Everything seems to be really durable. In fact, I have a drawer full of broken Craftsman screwdrivers that has now got a bunch of uh, screwdrivers from this company in it. And none, I haven't broke the heads off of any of those. It seems like right out of the gate, the screwdrivers are better quality, which is uh, enough for me. So anyway, we've got these, I've got, I have tool rolls now and I've always wanted tool rolls. So I guess we'll just get all the Tecton stuff, Tecton, Tecton. <laughs> you tell me, how am I supposed to be pronouncing this? We'll get this out of the way. This is a beautiful tool roll of wrenches. I'm so excited about this because again, this is what my wrenches were before and now they're rolled up and uh, it just comes like this from them. And so this is like the best way I can think of to have a quiet, slim way to store your tools in your rig. So we've got this and what's really cool is that this fits perfectly in this other uh, bag that I have from a company called Step 22. And these Step 22 products are pretty genius. First off, I like any company that makes the bag bigger than what you need. Anytime I've bought a tent and the tent company makes it to where the bag is bigger than the way it comes, I'm so pumped. Because you know when you re-roll that bag up or when you re-roll that tent up, it's not gonna fit in the bag unless it's a little bit bigger than the way that machine rolled it or whatever in the factory. So the fact that this is big enough that I can also fit this in there is great because boom, I've basically got most of my tools right here in these two packages. It's so much easier to deal with than what I had before. So this guy unrolls, I need to give it a little room because it unrolls for a ways. This unrolls, I've got a bunch of spare stuff in here, spare fittings and whatnot. If you guys watched me uh, build the air system for my Land Rover, I put a bunch of random stuff to be able to repair that air system in a Ziploc bag and I kept it in here. I've got extra um, lug nuts for the Land Rover, you know, just all kinds of stuff. I've got a lot of different, different things that I think are valuable to have on the trail for small spares. And uh, some more tools. This is more stuff from Tecton. Yeah, even more tools. That's one of the things that I, they said, what are the basics that you would need on the trail? And I told them and they sent that stuff to me. So we've got Allen wrenches. I like the types of Allens that go on the ends of sockets. I think these are extremely valuable for a lot of different situations. I've put some stubby screwdrivers in here because uh, there's been multiple occasions where a big screwdriver won't work on the trail and you need something shorter. And then I can unroll this guy, pull this over right here, and boom. I've got a whole bunch more screwdrivers. Now, this might seem excessive for screwdrivers, right? You probably only need to bring a few, but this kit has so many different sizes and shapes. I was like, you know what? There's no reason not to bring multiple options because we've all been there where you don't have a screwdriver that's quite long enough or it's too short or it's, uh, it's too long or whatever the situation may be. So it's nice to have options. And because of the way this is stored, it's not really that big of a deal to bring a few extra screwdrivers. So this is such, 
I'm just, I'm so excited to be able to get on the trail and use this because the way that I have done my tools before has not been, it's just not been fast. It's always a pain. Someone's like, hey man, do you have a screwdriver? I'm like, uh, yeah, I do. Let me go through my big random bag and see if I can find one in there. And uh, now this is gonna be so much easier to deal with, to unroll, find, use, and put away. And boom. That's the bulk of the tools that we're gonna bring on the trail now. Now there is some other stuff in here that I plan on uh, incorporating into that kit in some way. Like I've got, um, let's see here, 12 volt. Definitely gonna bring 12 volt in the new setup. You gotta have some basic 12 volt tools. I've got like butt crimpers and a little bit of extra wire and even some heat shrink and solder and whatnot in there. Uh, I have a multimeter, just the basic stuff that you would need to repair 12 volt. You know what, in fact, real quick, we'll just blast through that so you guys can see the basics of what I bring. I, I've been very fortunate and I haven't needed to uh, do much 12 volt repair on the trail. I, I really put a lot of care into the 12 volt stuff that I do here in the shop. So it's, I only have electrical issues every once in a while. It's not very often that I need to open this bad boy up. We've got a test light. We've got our multimeter, of course, electrical tape. Even if you don't wanna have 12 volt repair stuff, electrical tape's great for all kinds of things. Uh, heat shrink tube fuses, I mean, all the basics. I've got this little crack lighter here, and this thing is great for uh, just shrinking down heat tube. You can even solder with this if you need to. So it's a very whittled down 12 volt kit. There's probably a lot of people out there that carry more than this, but so far this has been all I need. Just extra relays, just random stuff that you might run into that could help get you back off the trail or just help you get back onto your trip. This bag, I've got I've got extra serpentine belts. I've got jumper cables. I've got extra tube or hose. Um, we've got paracord. Everybody should have paracord and duct tape. And it's, I don't know if that's a storage solution. Maybe here's a pro tip. <laughs> Put your paracord inside of your duct tape. I don't know. We've got um, zip ties, have to have zip ties. Ratchet straps, have to have ratchet straps. And then in this bag, I've got my small bottlenose jack and it leaks a little bit on its side, which is why I have it wrapped up in this bag. But I mean, that's about it. I also carry some basic fluids. I actually need to replenish some of my basic fluids. Let's, what do we got in this one? We have more ratchet straps. I can't tell you how many times we've gotten people off the trail because uh, we were able to use a ratchet strap to like repair a tie rod and like bolt everything together, even a leaf spring pack. We've had people with broken leaf spring packs. We were able to ratchet strap it all together and get them back to the trailer or get them down to the road so they could call a tow truck or whatever. This is from a company called Power Tank. I'm sure you guys have heard of them. Um, and I have had to use this. We had a guy, uh, my friend Brock, who he had a flat on his trailer and we were able to use this to fix his flat. These little kits are so nice and Power Tank makes high quality stuff. You're not gonna see me talk about Power Tank a lot today, but I'm a big fan of their company because once again, I like high quality stuff and uh, everything they make is high quality, including this little kit right here. We've got Flex Seal. If you're not using Flex Seal off-road, I don't know what you're doing. No, I'm kidding. I've actually seen someone repair a radiator hose with this at Easter Jeep Safari and it la the, that repair lasted all week. It was insane. So this stuff is actually pretty rad. This is just a Flex Seal or Flex Tape wrap that I think works really well. Got to have GMS, which is just, um, it's just silicone. Like this is the ultra black uh, silicone. I, oh, good thing I opened this. Looks like I had a failure in this bag. So I like to use like the food saver bags and whatnot to shrink down over different things that I don't want to get wet and keep it organized like this U-joint and whatnot. Cause I live in a wet environment. This stuff all gets wet multiple times throughout the year. And I like to pre-pack all my bearings and this one, Apparently he's had a rupture after being in here for a few years. So I'm just gonna throw another bag over the top of this bag and just re-shrink it back down because it helps keep things organized and helps keep grease out of, uh, out of your stuff. These are front wheel bearings. I like to bring extra front wheel bearings because if I'm going on a local trip and it's just a day trip, this isn't that big of a deal. As long as I can limp it back to the trailer, I'm fine. But if I'm like, I'm about to go to Moab for a week and then I'm gonna come home for four days and I'm gonna go back to Moab for another week and it's nice to have stuff like this because if you have a failure day one and you can't find the parts locally, um, it's nice to have this stuff already pre-packed pre with grease and everything. I can slide all the old stuff out, put this on, squirt a little extra grease on there, tighten it down, and I'm ready to finish my trip. So to me, these are absolute game changers. 
I've also got a little bit of extra brake fluid, small can of WD-40. These are super expensive, but I like that they're small, so I spend the extra money to get them. And I've got a full set of wheel bearings for the rear axle as well. Ooh, man. Yeah, that thing ruptured and leaked all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then we can talk about how I plan on storing this in the Jeep instead of just throwing it in the back. There are a ton of great options out there of ways that you can comfortably store all of your tools and equipment in your vehicle. And for a guy like me, I have a shop full of metalworking tools, so the sky's the limit. But I find that sometimes the simplest solution is the right solution. So even though I could spend a few weeks bending and building a one-of-a-kind series of storage bins for this Jeep, sometimes I need something that's relatively inexpensive, something that works, and something that I could have right now. So there's a lot of options for storage. I think that uh, all the kits that you can build into your rig are super sweet and obviously I have a shop full of tools and um, I know how to work with metal. I could make a one of a kind storage solution back here, but sometimes you just need something that works and something that's quick and something that's light. That's why I like plastics and stuff like this container from Rubbermaid is perfect for this job because it's like double walled and whatnot to make it to where it's impact resistant and tough it also latches closed, which I like. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it into the back of this Jeep with some bolts through the floor of this into the floor of the Jeep. I don't wanna have like a strap going over the top of it or anything like that. We're literally just gonna bolt it to the tub. What's cool is that there's a bunch of different sizes of these. And by the way, Rubbermaid has never been a sponsor and did not supply this. <laughs> I don't want it to sound like I'm a spokesperson for Rubbermaid. I just like, I think that this is gonna work really well for me. But they, they make a bunch of different sizes and shapes for this. After doing a little bit of research, I just determined that this is like three quarters of an inch narrower than my tub, so it should fit in there perfect. So for TJ guys, this is gonna be a good solution for a lot of us. Uh, this is a 35 gallon Rubbermaid, uh, whatever, Rubbermaid, what's it called? Action Packer. This is a 35 gallon Rubbermaid Action Packer. And I think that as as I change the shape of this tub and floor plan in future videos, cause I'm gonna have to, uh, I might add another one of these, like a smaller one, maybe for like camera gear or something. I like these, it's lightweight. I mean, this thing for the size is super light and I used to keep all of my stuff in ammo cans cause ammo cans are weather resistant, they're durable. I think that they're a really good option, but they're not plastic, so they're heavy. Ammo cans, the weight adds up pretty fast. This is not gonna add a whole lot of weight above what my gear weighs, and it's gonna be able to keep everything in one place. So it's kind of a win-win. I've seen some options out there from companies like Swag, where they make like special, like lockable covers for these. I don't think they make one for this 35 gallon, but anyway, I'll do a little research and see if, uh, if they do. Cause I do like the idea as well of being able to lock this because there's a lot of times where I'll be at Moab for a week and the top won't be on this thing for the entire week. So anyway, when you get started, I wanna get this mounted. And the first thing I need to do is I'm just gonna mock it up and decide where I want it back there. I wanna use three bolts to anchor this to the floor. And one of them is gonna go through the factory seat belt bolt location. So I'm gonna use a nut and bolt thread checker, see what the thread pitch is and search through all of my bulk bins to find the right bolt. Then I'm gonna put this Rubbermaid container in place and figure out where exactly I wanna drill the hole. After drilling the hole, I'm gonna mount it in place so it'll help me index where I wanna put the other two holes. Then after I unbolt the tote, I can drill the hole to the proper size and use a threaded rivet through the floor to be my other two anchor points. The factory seatbelt bolt ended up being an M12 and the other two riv nuts that I used were M8. I decided to keep everything metric because all the holes in the floor of this Jeep are all metric. Under each bolt, I used an oversized fender washer to help disperse the load, so whenever there's a rollover, it's much less likely that these will be able to rip through the base of this plastic tote. I hope you're ready for the dramatic conclusion of Nate bolts plastic into his Jeep. I think this is gonna work really well. It's obviously very simple. I didn't custom fabricate anything super cool or anything, but uh, with the three bolts that I used on this, it should bolt down to the floor just fine. I think that it's gonna hold all the gear just fine. And I've, I wanna explain a few things. I put all the stuff that I access the most on the top. So this is all of my air up and air down equipment. Um, I've got straps and my recovery gear right on top. All the rest of the tools and like serpentine belts and all that other stuff is gonna be at the bottom. Um, 
to be honest with you, I really like it. <laughs> this is like the best I've come up with so far. Um, and it's a lot better than just strapping a bunch of bags down to the tub. And then uh, also I want to talk about this. I have a space back here and there's a space in front of it. There's a small space in front and a, this, a bigger space in back. I did this for a couple of reasons. I don't want to have all of this weight up to the very edge back here. Um, it's just, it's better to have it farther forward towards where the passengers are. I stopped running a spare tire, which has actually really improved the off-road ability of this Jeep. And I don't want to add a bunch of weight and I don't want to push it all the way to the back. So I also, wanted to have a space back here because whenever I use gear and it gets really muddy, I don't want to put it back in here. I want to have a place in the very back where I can put muddy straps or muddy boots or whatever I want. And this is going to act as a divider between the gap in the back and the gap in the front. The stuff in the front, I want to be able to keep like an extra sweatshirt, a coat, um, my lunch, stuff like that. Things that I don't want to have get dirty, my camera gear, all that's basically going to go between this and the front seats. And that way I have uh, that way I'm utilizing this as a natural divider between the front and the back space. I hope that all that, all that makes sense to you guys. Anyway, I think that this is a work in progress. I'm going to be changing this tub. I'm going to be cutting the entire floor out at some point and uh, moving a whole bunch of stuff around. And whenever we do that video, I'll get into the reasons why. And whenever I do that, I think I'm going to try to incorporate this guy into that system because I really like the idea of just having a really lightweight plastic box back here to house everything instead of like a heavier steel custom jammy that I have to spend a week building in, uh, in the shop. So I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that I covered any sort of questions that you might have. And I hope that for those of you that asked me to do this video on social media, uh, liked what you saw. Also, before we go, uh, some of the stuff that I talked about today is gonna be in affiliate links that are down in the description the different things for Amazon, um, uh, the different stuff for the Step 22, that roll, that tool roll, and then uh, what else? The Yankum ropes. I'm gonna have affiliate links for all that stuff if you wanna see that in the description. And I'm not a part of the affiliate program for uh, Tecton or Tecton. Please let me know how to say that. <laughs> um, but I will put links to the tools that I have used in this video. So if you guys are interested in that, you can just click the link and it'll take you to their website as well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, usually I'm wheeling this thing or I'm, uh, I'm welding stuff together in the shop, but this was a little bit different video. If you wanna support our channel, you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, neck gaiters, stickers, all the stuff that I tell you guys about every week. And then we also have a link to our Patreon account there as well. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.